Welcome to Backstage with Kennedy This little show will be your remedy From Toronto spanning across the sea Cool people, lots of laughs This is your favorite podcast Hello and welcome, my name is Kennedy from the Backstage with Kennedy podcast I got a wicked guest today uh, coming all the way down from uh, San Diego, California, we got uh, BJ Jesbera here. Um, if you don't know who he is, search him up. You're going to love it. Uh, he kind of adds a little bit of comedy with a little bit of folk punk, a little bit of punk. Uh, kind of creates a little mariachi feel to it. You- you'll love this guy. I guarantee it. So, How's it going, BJ? What's up, man? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. No worries, brother. No worries. So, so what's it what's it like down in uh, California these days? Like, uh, I, I we spoke briefly earlier. Um, I know that in, like Toronto here, it's uh, quite quite um, intense. Uh, what's it like down there. Uh, I wouldn't say it's too intense, but it's definitely you know everything's closed up. There's not really uh, much going on anymore. But you know everybody's just kind of trying to stay safe and your part, yeah. I guess. Yeah, so so venues are obviously struggling out there too, I guess, eh? Just like pretty much everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I feel that, I feel that. So you're a big fan of Mariachi El Bronx. Um, what's your favorite tune by uh, the Bronx? I mean, it's all good. Um, I like the style, basically. Just like that kind of like, I wouldn't call it sarcastic, but, you know, kind of like tongue-in-cheek kind of like, it doesn't really... You wouldn't think that it works along that way, you know, but yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of the whole style kind of. I feel that. I feel that. So you, um, y- your music is a little bit of a combination between like comedy and uh, like uh, singer songwriter punk. So tell me, have you thought about doing like stand up as well or did you do stand up potentially? No, I mean, I've been on a few comedy shows just as like a random guy with acoustic guitar, like not even cracking jokes, just kind of like you know, going through my set. But there's a lot of humor in my set, a lot of sarcasm in my set. Um, basically, like, I don't know, I'm not much to look at. And my songs are kind of like, you know, everybody plays them. So it's just like you got to do what you got to do to make your make your mark. So my mark came in like that no effects brand of comedy and like uh, Blink-182, like off color comments, you know, like. Somebody would take a drink at the bar or something, and be like, "Don't, don't, don't drink that!" Oh, oh, <laughs> and then just uh, scare everybody a little bit. You know? I, I like that. I'm, I'm a big No Effects fan. Like, and and the one thing I love about them is, yeah, between songs, how they communicate with the, uh, with the crowd. Um, and you, you love doing that, eh? You love just talking to the crowd and stuff like that. Crowd work. Yeah, I mean, the whole reason they would do it, they'd say, is you know, they have a 90 minute set, but only 30 minutes of material. And I'm the other way around. I'll play like a three-hour set and have six hours of material, but still manage to talk half the time. <laughs> no, I feel that. So, so you, um, you obviously, um, you grew up in California, correct? Yep. Okay. So, what was the punk scene like out there? Like, obviously, the punk scene in California is huge, um, and for Latino artists, it's it's huge. Um, being someone who's doing this mariachi punk. Um, how has it been for you? Like, did you grow up listening to a lot of like mariachi and stuff like that as well? Not really. I mean, it's just kind of like part of the culture down here. Cause, uh, I live a little bit South of San Diego. It's called Chula Vista. Uh, it's definitely a bit more like a Latino community down here. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of, it's everywhere. And then as far as like the punk stuff goes, like everybody had a punk band in high school, you know, and one of my friend's bands actually like kind of took off, made it kind of big in the punk world. They're called Ticket Fence. Like yeah. world traveling, you know, hardcore punk kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of like everything around me kind of influenced my style from, you know, the punk scene to just growing up out here in Southern California. Like the whole the Latino vibe is just what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So, so this, this new album, um, sorry, this new EP, my bad, EP. Um, this new EP, when, um, well, can you tell people a little bit about it? Like a little bit more? Like, I think I can give like a general aspect of it but what are you trying to portray out of this for the people to hear on this ep well for this one it's just uh i mean all my stuff kind of it falls in the same wheelhouse it all you know sounds like me but everything kind of has its own little vibe its own little story going on um i wouldn't call it a concept album but it was you know we've worked on it for about four years start off just straight acoustic and then we're like well what if we added this and we added this we added this and it just kind of turned into what it did yeah. um 
but yeah, overall, I mean, it's the whole vibe of it's just, you know, supposed to be kind of fun and like, uh, give it that Southern California kind of vibe. <laughs> sick, sick. Okay. Um, so, so what did you grow up listening to then? Um, what, what were your like favorite bands that you listened to growing up? Uh, stuff like Blinkway 2, Green Day, Alkaline Trio, um, you know, and then like, just kind of like growing up around my parents, they were always listening to other stuff too. Like, you know, my dad's like an eighties metal head and my mom, she loved like Johnny Cash and Oingo Boingo and all these things and like Stray Cats, like, so all these different like bands just kind of like floating around all the time. And then, yeah, once I got into high school, I discovered, you know, my own kind of taste of like punk and like metal and stuff. Yeah. But the, uh, the singer songwriter thing just kind of happened because I've been in so many bands, you know, and wrote so many songs for all these bands. And when the bands break up, you just keep writing songs. <laughs> Yeah. So, so when you made this, uh, this EP, was it, did you play all the instruments in the, in the project or did you get session people to jump in on that? Yeah, we actually had other artists, uh, on our label Manic and Vanity records from other bands jumping in. So we had one, uh, his name's Nico. He lives in France, actually. He, uh, he's in one of the bands called Band Apart. He played the accordion. And then, uh, mm-hmm. we had, Yakovic from Kel Bordell, he played the mandolin, he sang, and then their drummer as well, Nick Sitar, he played drums. And then, uh, yeah, we had uh, Tyler from uh, the the Clint, Clint, I forget what they call themselves, but the Clint Westwood band, basically, to me. They, uh, he played the trumpet, and uh, yeah, so it, all, it just kind of came together that way. It's nice. So, like, a, a little bit of a combination between a bunch of people collaborating on one person's project. So, that's sick. That's sick. Um, yeah. So yeah, TJ Rivera was a part of the project um, with the mixing and mastering. Um, can you? How was it working with him? I'm sure it was pretty cool. I mean, I only communicated with him through text like once or twice, um, yeah. but it was definitely really exciting to know that like it was in the hands of someone who also deals with you know Tim Armstrong and Rancid and stuff. And I even heard that Tim had heard one of the tracks or something and like you know wanted it sent to him. So I'm like, that's cool. Tim Armstrong's heard my voice, but. Uh, yeah, I think TJ killed it. I think he gave it a really good sound and uh, kind of made it the big full, you know, mariachi experience that you hear. Like, I mean, it sounded good before, but once it gets in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing, mixing and mastering, they just really open it up really well. Yeah, yeah. So you, you got a song in there, La Cocaracha. So uh, that song, is it about a real cockroach or a fake cockroach? That's actually a traditional uh, Mexican song. It's like a... Uh, it was a protest song back in the day against the Mexican president. That's where the, the chorus comes from. They used to call him a cockroach. He wouldn't go outside the house. He wouldn't do anything without smoking a little weed. So that's where it comes from. Um, okay. And so the, the chorus is just like the straight traditional La Cucaracha and then everything else. Yeah, <laughs> just wrote a stupid little story about it. <laughs> I, w- I wasn't sure if uh, if there was a cockroach like in your house or someone's house you knew and that you're like, you know what, I'm going to base it off this, even though that's the original like – folk song for it i'm like i thought maybe you're making like a twist on it but it was still about a cockroach that you saw once you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah great names on the on the project by the way um i think uh, the the ep title is uh incredible um and everybody needs to check that out for sure um but we we spoke about it briefly a little bit earlier um venues are all struggling right now can you tell me a story about um, your favorite venue locally and um, yeah, w- and give a little shout out to a, to a local venue? I mean, I've played mostly, you know, dive bars. I've played some venues like the Casbah and some of the bigger spots around San Diego. But uh, my heart and soul, you know, is bar shows and like dive bars, especially. So I could run off a list of like 10 of them at least. But just in general, it's, you know, it's tough to see so many, you know, bars or you know just businesses in general that people have poured their entire life into and it's just they get they get stuck you know there's there's no way around it they can't do anything about it and some of them you know we're able to kind of do some outside stuff or just kind of break the rules a little bit but for the most part everybody just kind of got you know just blindsided by this so it sucks to see them all kind of like hurting and you know the best thing we can do is just kind of remember that they're more than just a place to play, especially like on the musician side, like mm-hmm. you got to go out there and support them. If they're doing like takeout and delivery, go, you know, support them a little bit, you know? Yep. Absolutely. And do you have, do you have a story about uh, one of your shows like uh, that the people may be interested in something that you, something obscure, something uh, ridiculous that happened at a show once or twice? 
Oh man, my shows are always ridiculous. <laughs> I'll tell you one time I was uh, I was playing, and this is the same reason why I never sit down when I play. Uh, okay. I'd been playing in this little hole in the wall bar in an area called North Park, and it's kind of like a college town, like all the you know hipsters kind of hang out there and stuff. Um, and I started playing in this bar. This is when I also got introduced to you know the magic elixir called Jameson, and uh, my buddy Jake Yakovich on the album. He uh, he kind of was introducing me to the world of rock and roll, if you will say, and uh, <laughs> got a little too toasty on stage. I'm sitting on my on my stool and I'm probably like two songs in and I'm just done. I shouldn't be anywhere near a microphone, but I reached down to get my water and the stool was a little too tall and I was a little too short. And uh, I fell face first off the stage, like three feet off the stage to the ground with the guitar and the mic, made a big clang. Still got up and finished the show, though. <laughs> Oh man, that's yeah. I mean, hey, that's that's what it's about getting up and finishing the show after that. You know what I mean? Exactly. I, the guitar I wasn't broke. I wasn't broke. We're gonna keep going. I did that nearly once. Um, I, I used to be a hip hop artist, and I was playing an open mic in Toronto at my favorite bar, the Bovine. And uh, yeah, I always said, you know, I can deal with about seven beers. After that, done. Well, I got up to fourteen. And, uh, <laughs> I, I performed, um, my, my voice was fine, my pronunciation was fine, like everything was good, except my legs weren't working. So <laughs> I almost went off the side of the stage too. So, I mean, the, the Jameson will do it, the Jagermeister will do it too, let me tell absolutely. you. <laughs> Pretty much anything will do it if you do too much of it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so where can people find your music? Uh, uh, obviously, like Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff. Uh, do you have like a place where people can grab your merch, any of that stuff? Uh, right now you can get my merch. I got like t-shirts and stuff uh, off our label website, mannequinvanityrecords.com. And then other than that, uh, yeah, if you want to go Apple, Apple Music, uh, Google Play, Spotify, all that stuff. But then also I'm doing uh, semi-regular live streams. It used to be weekly, but I just recently had a baby. Well, my wife had the baby. I'm, <laughs> I'm just the dad. We, uh, you know, we do what we can and... Uh, so it's, you know, every couple of weeks I'll do a live stream on like YouTube and Twitch, you know, take requests and, you know, mess around with people in chat, get drunk, fall off stage. <laughs> Sick. Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to hop on the next one. So you, you send me that message and I'll keep an eye on it as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I hope everybody uh, does go and check out BJ's music because uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I had my roommate uh, listening the other day too, and he was really into it as well. So uh, I appreciate you coming on the podcast, BJ. I like to keep these super short and sweet, man. Thank you so much. And uh, you take care of that, uh, that young one, and you have a great rest of your evening. All right, brother? Thanks, man. You too. Have a good one. Thanks for having me.